powerful message, obviously one from the heart, compelling message, and I want to thank her for that. I uh, we got a bunch of new uh, pages here, uh, Mr. President, and they uh, showed up for duty uh, earlier this week. And they are uh, generally, I think, rising juniors and probably 16 years old or so. And uh, most of the uh, 800,000 people that we're talking about here as dreamers came here before they were old enough to be a page. And many of them weren't even old enough to go to kindergarten or first grade. They uh, didn't uh, come here by their own volition. They were, for the most part, brought here by their parents. And they were brought here to flee horrific conditions in countries like Honduras, Guatemala, Salvador, where there's uh, violence, murder, mayhem, that is largely created because of our addiction to drugs in this country, in this country. And uh, we, uh, they send us drugs trafficked through those countries from South America. And we send uh, guns and money to places like Honduras and Guatemala and El Salvador. And when uh, we uh, take into custody uh, bad guys, people are here illegally, that are also criminals, uh, where do we send them? We send them back to Honduras, Guatemala, and Salvador. So we send them criminals, we send uh, guns and money to those uh, three countries. And uh, the conditions that uh, that toxic mix creates are ones that I wouldn't want to submit uh, my children and my family to. And frankly, a lot of people in those three countries feel the same way. We are complicit in their misery. We are complicit in their misery. And that is why so many uh, folks from those three countries, we call it the Northern Triangle, why they've tried to escape. These kids didn't come in on their own. They came here with their parents. Uh, many of them, uh, frankly, don't have any memories of where they were born. The, uh, we're not looking for them to, uh, to become American citizens. Uh, what uh, DACA attempts to do is to give them uh, some time to give us some time to be able to uh, make their stays here uh, legal, something short of, of citizenship. Why should, uh, if you're not touched, if our hearts aren't touched by the stories that um, Senator Warren just told us about these three young people, uh, I want to take a, a little different approach to express why we should uh, care. I uh, come here to the United States Senate some years ago as a recovering governor. I was privileged to be governor of Delaware from 93 to 2001. And people say that I'm still a recovering governor. Uh, but I have focused uh, much of my uh, life in public service on creating a nurturing environment for job creation and job preservation. People, uh, presidents, governors, senators, mayors, I like to talk about the jobs they created. Uh, in truth, we don't create jobs. People in our positions uh, try to create a more nurturing environment for job creation. And that includes a, uh, a quality workforce with the skills that are needed by employers. It includes transportation, infrastructure that works, it includes public safety, it includes access to capital, to finance for projects. Uh, it includes a lot of things. Energy, affordable energy, reasonable tax burden, common sense regulations. Those are some of the, some of the elements that create a nurturing environment. One of the top items on that list is always workforce. People who have the skills that employers are looking for, people who have the willingness to come to work, to work hard, to be trained, and to uh, be promoted in many cases. People are honest. I have uh, not met uh, 800,000 dreamers, but uh, at Delaware State University, which is a historically black college and university in Dover, Delaware, been around for 125 years. Uh, there are about 40 uh, dreamers who are undergraduates there, either a freshman or a sophomore, and I've met most of them. They're some of the most remarkable college students I've ever met. These are, uh, these are students who aren't just getting by with a 2.0 average or a 3.0 average. These are students that are uh, dean's list, who come to school on time, don't cut classes, make uh, uh, excellent grades, work, in many cases, part-time jobs to help support their, uh, their time in school, and who um, are anxious to be able to make real contributions to our community, to our, to our state, and to our country. One uh, young man, uh, I think he was from Salvador, sat at a, a public event we had two, two days ago, on Tuesday at Delaware State University. 
he said to, uh, to us that the president of the, uh, Harry Williams of the university, their new provost, Tony Allen, he uh, stood up and he, he held his hand over his heart and he said, every day uh, since I was in the age of five in kindergarten, I held my hand in school over my heart and pledged allegiance to that flag, that flag. He said, I don't have any other flag. I don't have any other country. This is my country. Uh, we need young men and young women like him. I learned uh, early this, uh, this month when we got the, from the Department of Labor the jobs report for the month of, of, of August. And one of the things that it shared with us is that there are millions of people in this country, actually not millions of people, there are millions of jobs in this country, millions of jobs in this country that are going unfilled. There are millions of jobs in this country that are going unfilled. We have thousands of them in Delaware. Michigan probably has uh, tens of thousands. Ohio is told by one of the Ohio senators that 150,000 jobs in Ohio that are not being filled because the people that are applying for them don't have the skills, maybe the work ethic, the record. They have, in some cases, can't pass a drug test. And yet these employers, the employers in all of our states need workers. And in a day and age when we need workers with the, the skills, academic skills, the work skills, we need them probably more than ever. We're ready to pack up 800,000 of them and send them back to where their parents came from, where they were born. It is in America's naked self-interest to ensure that these young people are given a shot. They're given a shot to make the kind of contributions that they're capable of, to meet the needs of hundreds of thousands of employers in this country. Given that opportunity, they will make their parents proud, they will make us proud, they will make our nation stronger, more economically vibrant. It is in our interest to let them stay, to welcome them here. I'll close with the words of, of Matthew 25. When I was a stranger in your land, did you welcome me? Think about that. When I was a stranger in your land, did you welcome me? Let's welcome each other.